The storm that's presently taking place outside may not be the only one that's about to really take off. I have here a Dell Optiplex 320. This is apparently a very low-end and crappy model. A little bit better than the GX520 and 620 though, because it can actually run some Core 2 Duo chips, though not any that you'd actually probably want to run in this day and age. Machine's got a 3.6 GHz single-core hyper-threaded Pentium 4 processor in it. I think that's about as fast as you ever could officially go with the Pentium 4, and the only reason it's in there was because, you guessed it, this system came with a pretty crappy CPU in it, and it wouldn't take any of the even halfway decent or recent Core 2 Duo chips I had kicking around. It would run with them, but it wouldn't run them at anything like its rated speed. And while I have been running Windows 7 on this machine, its onboard video is well and truly winded by that task, so we have a high-end ATI Radeon 5400 HD series, maybe a 5450, I'm not sure. It's still not much of a video card, but it's a darn sight better than the uh, Radeon Express integrated graphics on this machine. Now the one thing that I have noticed about Windows 8.1 and later on 64-bit capable single-core Pentium 4s, if you try to install Windows 8.1 on such a machine, it will crash. And I believe that Windows 10 does as well, and I think the reason being has to do with lack of hardware resident instructions inside the microprocessor. But Windows 10 seems to think it can do this. This machine is running 64-bit Windows 7 right now, so we'll see whether or not it can actually pull this off. I don't know when it's going to get around to rebooting. I think maybe it's threatening to do that right about now. Thing only has two gigabytes of RAM in it, so this probably isn't the good idea that it, well, didn't seem like. <laughs> so let's just go ahead and see what this thing does here. It's getting ready to restart. Uh, it'll be interesting to see if Windows 10 respects the fact that I turned off the reboot on stop error setting, which is one of those things that Microsoft never should have turned on in any consumer version of Windows. It's configuring the update. So that might take a while. I guess we'll be back when it's ready to restart the computer, and we'll see what happens. Alright, better turn that off before the Music Mafia canes us. Let's see what happens here. That'll be very interesting. Will it actually manage to boot into Windows 10? Or will it crash and burn? That is the question. Now, the only single core Pentium 4s I've ever tried this on were Optiplex GX620s, and maybe there's a BIOS bug in those or something, I don't know. The screen just went blank. I saw a window appear briefly. Looks like we made it though. So maybe there's something wrong with the Optiplex GX620 in 64 bit Windows 8.1 or later, I don't know. Or maybe this 3.6 GHz single core P4 is new enough that it actually has the needed instructions. I don't know, but we'll see if it actually manages the upgrade. I guess I could turn that off. Get a little less glare on the screen that way. Well, I'm back, and in a manner of speaking, I'm pleased to report that this Optiplex 320 computer has made it to Windows 10. I'm really quite surprised. Of course, you can be sure I'm going to customize the daylights out of these settings, turn off as many information gleaning things as I can find. I'm sure there are people who will ask about this or say, Oh no, UXW Bill is running Windows 10! And I'll try to explain some of my rationale in the uh, video description, even though I know, like, nobody reads that. You know, it's very quaint in this day and age of people barely being able to use the language from the scourge of texting that someone would still care to spell out their feelings and interests and desires about a given subject, why they feel the way they do, and expect that anybody else might actually read it. But I digress a little bit. <laughs> nope, no Cortana. Hmm. Choose my default apps. No, 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 no. Next. <laughs> I would be lying if I had the audacity to tell you that Windows 10 was an easy load for a computer like this. It's certainly not, but it is most definitely running. Here's some details about the computer's central processing unit. One of the things that I noticed when I was looking this up, this is a Cedar Mill chip. 
which would make it newer than the Prescott, the LGA 70, 775 Prescotts that I've got in the Optiplex GX620. And while there are X64 capable versions of those chips, they are pretty early days for that sort of thing, and maybe they're not capable enough for the Windows 8.1 and later kernel to coexist with them in 64-bit mode. I know they work just fine if you're running 32-bit, but Microsoft imposed some restrictions and made use of newer functionality that may simply not be present in those chips. I haven't done any comparisons or research to find out exactly what the story might be. As I said when I opened up this section of video, this computer is running Windows 10, but it's not running Windows 10 easily. <laughs> you can see we're at 50% of the 2 gigabytes worth of RAM that this thing has installed. I think that is the maximum for this machine, which was fine back in the Windows XP days when this machine would have been brand new. And while the central processing unit is sitting largely idle right now, all we have to do, I was going to say this, and now look at that, it's made a fool of me because it's been sitting there flat for a while. When this machine was completing its various post setup tasks like upgrading OneDrive and doing various other things that I didn't ask or really even want it to do at that particular point, the CPU usage was almost completely pegged. These single core systems are at an incredible disadvantage in this day and age because of the fact that multi-core processors have been a reality for basically a decade now. And almost everybody's got a system that runs with one, so everybody who writes software, they optimize everything for the multi-core systems. You can see that this system actually does support speed step. The processor speed is stepping around to try and save on energy and heat output. But if I were to drive that up to the maximum here for a couple of moments, I don't think that's something I want to do right now. But you can definitely see it jump around. Might do that later. The heat sink in this machine is a little bit questionably installed and I'd rather not try to kill it. <laughs> I probably should have fixed that before I even installed Windows 10 on this thing. And now comes the part where I'm probably going to get myself into trouble with a few members of the viewing audience, quite possibly more than a few. I know how fellow YouTuber V Westlife has been responded to with some of his Linux videos, and the only thing I would imagine that's more rabid than diehard Linux fans are diehard Windows 10 users, or maybe even Windows 10 users as a whole. But before I go to making trouble for myself, I want to take a brief sidebar and talk about this little computer that you're looking at right now. This is something that Elmol3 here on YouTube introduced me to. This is a Dell Latitude 2120 netbook. I've always loved the netbook form factor. I guess everybody's gaga for tablets these days. I just never really have been. The things I expect of a computer aren't easily done on a tablet, and things like app stores and similar really just aren't of any interest to me. But netbooks, even though they eventually prove to be something of a flop with the rest of the world, they're a major hit in my book. I absolutely love them. And until I got this thing, I would have told you that the best netbook anyone ever made, with the possible exception of the keyboard, was the Lenovo IdeaPad S10. I still have my IdeaPad S10, and I still think it's a great netbook. But with these, Dell really hit one out of the park. A lot of it comes from the virtue of simply having later microprocessor and chipset technology in it. The Intel Atom microprocessor really needed something better than the uh, 945 chipset that it was paired with, the 950 chipset. And it finally got that in the form of the Intel NM10 and the later N550 silicon, which this machine actually utilizes. But here's where I get myself into trouble. I think Windows 10 is a pile of crap. I don't like it. There's a lot of things I don't like about it. I don't want to get into an argument about it in the comments with anybody. Uh, in fact, I'm not going to do that, and I'm going to request that you refrain from doing the same. If you want to hear some of my reasoning, or rather read it, you can find it in the video description area. Although, again, maybe I'll be pretty safe. Maybe I won't uh, be called to defend myself, because nobody reads video descriptions anyway. <laughs> I'll give you my reasoning behind disliking Windows 10, and why Windows 8 and 8.1 are probably the last releases of Windows I'm ever going to run, unless Microsoft radically changes their tune. But I do have to give some credit where credit is due. This little netbook is actually set up to dual boot. It had historically been booting into Windows 7 Professional and Linux Mint. And most any time 
I have set up a dual booting system with Microsoft Windows in any way, shape, or form. If I made a major change to that version of Windows, like attempting to upgrade it, Microsoft usually shot down whatever boot manager was in use and reset things to the way they once were. If you can tell, it's been a while since I did this last, as in OS 2 and Windows 98. <laughs> but I even had some entertaining things show up with later versions of Windows. I haven't done a whole lot of dual boot stuff. But every now and again, it does come in handy. These days, I pretty much virtualize multiple operating systems if I want to run them. But like I say, every now and again, you need something that virtualization can't do. And this is a great little computer to take with me on all manner of consulting jobs. I kind of hate to take it out and mess it up because I had the fortune to come across one of these that was nearly brand new in appearance, and I've managed to keep it that way. Very low hours unit. Dell really missed a trick with these particular products. But here's the thing that I wanted to touch on. The Windows 10 upgrade did not destroy the Grub bootloader, so I can still effortlessly boot this machine into Linux Mint if that's what I want to do. I don't have to repair anything. So, perhaps rather grudgingly, I got to give some credit where credit is due. Microsoft didn't behave poorly toward other operating systems on the same computer. And that alone excuses a lot of Windows 10 sins, but it doesn't excuse the worst of them, which again will be outlined over in the video description area. Getting back to what I was talking about, Dell really missed a trick with these machines. Officially, they were only available to medium and large business buyers, and I don't think there was a con um, I don't think there was an Inspiron version of this computer. I could be wrong. I am, however, tired of being taken to task over my pronunciation of the brand name Inspiron. People, the root word is Inspire. Okay? Don't make me draw you a picture. Because I'm going to get irritated and I'm going to lose what little faith I have left in humanity. I'll go ahead and boot into Windows 10 now. Just to prove to you that it still works. It drives me up a tree when people think that their pronunciation of a word is correct and in reality it's wrong. And I think you're wrong about calling me on the way I pronounce Inspiron. So deal with it. <laughs> Not really open for a lot of debate on that. See, I'm just really I'm just really going for the gold here. I think maybe I better divert some attention from myself. What's this thing over here? Why, it would appear to be a camcorder with quite a few different tally lights. In closing, I will say this. Linux is a lot kinder to this little machine than Windows is. This is honest-to-goodness, unretouched, unedited footage. I had time to go over and make that offhanded comment about the tally light. And it's still booting into Windows 10, whereas Linux Mint came right up and nine times out of ten I boot this machine into Linux Mint. So if you're thinking that the Penguin never gets any love around here, you would be wrong about that. Just have to pick the right applications for it and I'm not quite ready to turn my desktop computing environment entirely over to Linux. But the way Microsoft seems to be going with Windows, if Windows 10 doesn't get a lot better in a lot of ways, then I think I'm probably done with it. I'm only reserving these upgrades for the eventual possibility that maybe Windows 10 will someday, in Microsoft's constantly evolving style that they have adopted with its release, maybe it won't be such a disaster. Maybe they'll get some of the stupidest bugs out of it. Maybe they'll realize that people are not interested in all that telemetry crap. But for now, folks, I think it's time to go ahead and wrap up this particular video. I will see you all later. Thank you so much for watching, and by all means, certainly do feel free to leave a comment if you have one.